What is good everybody, man, it's your boy Jay in the building. We is back again with another video. Now before we get this video started, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel, make sure y'all share the video. <sighs> now I think it's, um, we it's enough time has passed. I think we're at the right time of the year to where I think the rosters are finalized. So I think I could finally put out my top 10 teams heading into 2024, man. Uh, so without further ado, man, this is going to be very, I'm going to try to move this as quickly as possible, man. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 10, I have South Carolina State. Uh, I'm excited to see what Coach Barry does in his first year. Uh, we've seen what he did in his last two years at Benedict. And it's something that Benedict has never experienced before, which is not only a conference championship but two regular season under two undefeated regular seasons uh he's a great motivator i think that that lock uh that south carolina state locker room is going to be extremely motivated for 2024 damn near the majority of the players that benedict transferred to south carolina state so it definitely lets you know how good of a coach he is uh so good that eric phoenix transferred from murray state or wherever he came from transfer to South Carolina State let you know how good of a coach uh, coach Barry is man and he had a real good recruiting class this year he has a great running room uh, uh running back room the linebacking core on defense is intact uh I think it's a tremendous upgrade at the quarterback position because if y'all saw last year there was not a great passing team at all I think as a team they only threw I think that they threw less than 1,400 yards, but had almost 2,500 rush yards. That's too wide of a gap passing-wise for that to happen. And you ain't going to have a successful season doing that. Even though there were 3-2 and two in the conference, I think Eric Phoenix is a tremendous upgrade at the quarterback position. And not only... Could South Carolina State run the ball? Even with the current running backs that they do have, Eric Phoenix could run the ball himself. So I think it's a tremendous upgrade offensively anyway. So I do think South Carolina State is going to have a, a good year this year. And I can't wait to see what happens, man. So I have South Carolina State at number 10. At number 9, and I know a lot of y'all are going to be shocked about this, but y'all just hear me out for a minute. But at number nine, I have Morgan State. <laughs> I have Morgan State at number nine, man. Hear me out. Now, outside of, I think, Princeton, or outside of Yale, outside of Yale, defensively, they competed in every game. In every game. First game of the year, they, they beat Richmond, and that same Richmond team beat Central beat North Carolina Central in the first round of playoffs. Uh, they lost by three points to an FBS team in the University of Akron. And when they came to conference play, they held the top two offenses in the MEAC to under 20 points. Both of them. Both teams. Uh, I think defensively, and listen, what Coach Wilson has been doing his first two years at Morgan State, it hasn't translated to a lot of wins, but they've been competing. And it, it, listen, I know, and I think he's entering his third year. So normally around the time, the third or fourth year is where you really start to get the team that you've been wanting, like in terms of recruiting wise. But they still do have some talent, especially on the, defensive side but on on offense they still have jj davis who i believe is still one of the top players in the MEAC returning uh i'm interested to see what they do at their quarterback spot and their weapons at receiver but in terms of defense they still have their top three sack leaders they still have elijah williams they still have eric hunter uh they still have a lot of guys on defense to where they are going to be formable this year. Now, if their offense is able to score at least 20 points a game, because last year, 
They only scored about 15 points, uh, I think 15 to 16 points a game. They didn't get a lot of yards at all, neither rushing or passing. I think they only had about 12 or 1,300 pass yards, but they had, I think, 1,200 rush yards. So, offensively, they weren't explosive at all. But if they can score to at least 22, 23 points a game while the defense still playing as hard as they play, this team could be a really good team this year. And I do have a lot of conf uh, confidence in what Coach Wilson does for this team. So I do have Morgan State being being a real good competitor in the MEAC. And I have this team at number nine. At number eight, I have North Carolina Central. Now, I know offensively they're going to look completely different. No Davis Richard, no Latrell Collar, no Devin Smith. They lost a couple of all conference offensive linemen and i think i think walker harris is going to get the start at quarterback i believe so but i think the, I, I definitely want to see what they look like offensively but on the defensive side i think the majority of the defensive players are still intact they still have uh Jaden flaker uh cole jones Jaden taylor they got uh jason chambers still so i think Defensively, they still have all their big-time playmakers on defense. I think outside of Manny Smith and uh, Brennan uh, Codrington, I believe so. But outside, of, so well, I want to see what they uh, what they do uh, in the secondary. But the weapons that they have coming in, especially the uh, the the two guys from Duke, they have a cornerback from coming from Alabama. I think defensively. North Carolina Central is going to be set. Like, I don't think I'm not going to have any, I'm not going to be too worried about Central defensively. But off, like, on the offensive side of the ball, I'm really anxious to see what this new, what the new quarterback looks like for the entire year. I'm real interested in Central, but I do have Central at number eight. I think defensively, they'll be able to get it done. So I am waiting to see what happens with that. So I got sent to at number eight. At number seven, I have all corn state. Uh now, um, I don't think I put enough respect on all corn in the team that they have returning for this year. Now I think defensively, outside of them losing Terrence Ellis, I think defensively this is gonna be a real good squad. Oh, oh and they lost uh Kenan Leachman too. Uh but outside of those two. I think Kenny Leach win is still there. I, I'm not sure. But I, even with that, Alcorn defensively is still going to be a good squad. They still got Edwin in the secondary. They have Tyler Smith. They, I think they have uh, still Marion Edwards still. And they have Malik uh, uh, Melakai Bailey, who I believe might be one of the front runners. At least he's one of my top three guys to win SWAC Defensive Player of the Year. I think last year he had, I think, what, 15 and a half tackles for loss with nine sacks. Uh, now, I'm interested to see what um, Tyler Macon looks like this year. I think I think he, he might have been hurt within the first three or four games last year, if, if I, I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. But um, I'm interested to see where the, where the points for Alcorn State come from, uh, them losing their the great running back uh and i think montario hunt is not there but they still have malik rogers they still have um i think what uh to various adams listen i think this squad j just in general i think is gonna make it a tough out for who i have winning the west but we'll get to that in a second but i do have all corn state being a real good squad hey, hey they had a real good year last year they had a real good season last year, so I am interested to see what they do, but I have Alcorn State coming in at number seven. And number six, I have Pairview A&M. Now, it's a close six between Pairview and Alcorn when I have them at number seven, and me having Pairview at number six, I think it's very close. It, it, it's a lot closer than when I originally made this list. But I got a pair of you slightly ahead of Alcorn. Um, 
Lucas Cooley. Uh, I think this pickup for Pairview is going to remind me of when they got Jawan Pass back in 2021. I think offensively, they're going to, I think they may look like that when they look like in 2021. It's a real, I think it's a real huge upgrade from the quarterback position a year ago. I think as a team, they only had nine touchdown passes and just a lot of mistakes in the passing game. So I think that this this pickup by a quarterback is going to be a real huge upgrade for their offense, especially with them having um, the weapons like Shamar Savage and uh, Trajan Spiller. And then getting additional weapons like James Burns, the receiver from UConn. They're getting McDowell, the uh, the running back from Campbell. Then they get a, a tight end, I forget his name. Um, I think he's a transfer from, from Alabama State, who was a three-star recruit from UConn. So I think offensively, they're going to be better. And they have a, they have another running back uh, for, for Perry, I think. Uh, Jamarius, uh, Jamarius Brooks, I believe. I, I think he might have a breakout year as well. Now, defensively, they are losing a lot of good weapons on defense. Let me see. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson. I think uh, Trayvon Green. I think they still have C.J. Presley. But I think I'm I'm interested to see what Pairview looks like defensively. But they did have a real, real good recruiting class. So I am interested to see how that gets put together but i like pair of you heading into this year i think i have them winning the west but it's going to be very interesting between them and all coin state i do want to see what that matchup looks like i think we might get another classic out of that but i got pair of you at number six all right so this is where things get a little interesting where we just Made it to the top five. So, at number five, I have Tennessee State. Um, now, I'm not going to lie. I had this team as high as number two. Um, and I was kind of hesitant on keeping them in the top five for this reason. Uh, now, for, now, 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 for one, I do like what they have offensively they still have Draylon Ellis at the quarterback spot they still have a lot of weapons on offense from a year ago that they have coming back I think on offense and the guys that they recruited on offense I really do love what they have not only coming back but they have going in I think they'll be able to score with anybody not only in HBCU football but in their own conference the problem that I have with Tennessee State, and I almost didn't have them in the top five for this reason. They just lost too much on defense. And I didn't realize how much they lost until I did this list a few times. They're losing Terrell Allen, Monroe Beard, uh, Jer- Jeremiah Joseph, uh, Bruce. F- they lost a lot of guys that were playmakers for the defense from last year. They lost a lot of those guys. Josh Green, um, Josh Green, James Green, um, um, Ahmad Nelson. Like, they've lost a lot of guys on defense that made me question whether or not to put them in the top five. But I do think that their offense is well, is really, really good enough for me to say, bump all that. I think they're gonna be, I think they're gonna be real good this year. Um, I think like what last year they won what five or six games, which was the most that they had since 2016. I do think they they might be the same. I think they could win six games, maybe even more, hopefully. Um, but I'm not worried about them on the offensive side, but defensive side, I am. I am a little worried about them a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, but. The guys that they do have coming in, hopefully they can replace what they've lost. But I am confident enough to put them in the top five because I am a believer in their offense for real. So I do. I have Tennessee State. And number five. At number four, 
I have Howard University. Now, if you if you were to ask me, um, who do you have winning the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year? I'll tell you that I don't know, but I'll tell you if there was a top five, if we if we had to tell me to give me to give you a top five, I think Howard has at least three of them. They have three guys in the top five who I believe that could win MEAC Offensive Player of the Year: Casey Hawthorne, Jared Hunter, and Eden James. And then, like. I think those three guys alone are going to be able to just score a lot of points for Howard. Uh, I think now they do have a new quarterback this year. I think I think Jason Truggins, I think that's going to be their starter. But if he is able to do what the last quarterback did last year or even better, I think this I think they're going to go back to the celebration bowl. And then on the defensive side, they still got Kenny Gallup, who y'all know was the MEAC defensive player of the year from last year. They still have all conference guys on defense coming back. I think one of them, let me see who number, yeah, Terrence, Terrence Holland. Yeah, I they have a lot of guys on defense that, that they are, that they may just be the best defense in the MEAC. And I think most definitely going to be the best offense in the MEAC, especially with those three guys. So, yeah, I think Howard might be on another run to the Celebration Bowl, man. I have them as the best team in the MEAC, and I have them at number four. At number three, I have Jackson State. Um, Offensively-wise, I do like Jacoby and Morgan. I think Jacoby and Morgan might be probably top two at least top three quarterbacks in the SWAC heading into this year. I like what he did in the second half of the year. Uh, and it's going to be real interesting to see what he looks like throughout all 10, 11 games. I like their running back group, starting with Irv Mulligan. I think Irv Mulligan might be a top two running back in the SWAC. Um, I think right behind Donovan England from Alabama A&M. You got the receiving core in Jackson State. I do like the receiving core a lot in Fabian McCray, Rico Powers, Isaiah Spencer. So I think offensive-wise, I think Jackson State is going to be pretty decent. And especially, you know, and then you got a new play caller, the head coach, T.C. Taylor. He's going to be calling plays this year. So I am interested to see what their offense looks like. Defensively, though, um... I am probably a little worried about them a little bit. I'm not going to lie. They lost the the, the linebacking core is going to look new. And then with the veteran guys that they were losing throughout the, the duration of their spring ball, it made me a little worried a little bit. Now, they do. Now, their recruiting class is amazing. Top three in uh, top three in HBCU football, period. I like what they have coming in. I like Hasaias Guthrie. I do like uh, Key Drink uh, Collingen. I like Philip Webb. Now, they still have some quality guys on defense to make them a competitor in the SWAC. I, I have them as a top two, top three team in the SWAC. Now, what's going to be interesting is the schedule because I don't think their schedule them favors them that much. Uh, I think kicking off with their non-conference schedule i think their first game of the year they have louisiana monroe then when we get to their conference game they're uh they have grambling state on the road and grambling state ain't gonna be no pushover at all coach joseph has done his had done a real good job over there at grambling state and i can't wait to see what that team looks like but grambling state ain't gonna be no pushover uh you gotta uh then listen they have FAMU at home. Listen, they've been seeing FAMU in Florida for the last three years. Now they have FAMU at home. It's going to look, it might get a little spooky for, for, for FAMU. But we don't know. But that, that game going to be crazy. And then you got to go to Bethune-Cutman's homecoming when 
at the recruiting job that that Bethune Cookman just did. Listen, I think Bethune Cookman's homecoming is gonna be absolutely jumping, and you you barely escaped that game last year, so that's gonna be different. Then you gotta go to Alabama State. Then you gotta go to Alcorn State. The road is a little tough for Jackson State, but I think Jackson State does have a good enough roster to compete. I think, listen, I think if if, if if all goes well for Jackson State, listen, who knows what can happen with that team, man. But I do think Jackson State is one of the best teams in HBCU football. I do believe that uh, Jacobia Morgan, I think if we're talking about Schwack, Offensive player of the year, I think he could be in the running, man, especially with the second half, his first five games that he played, real, he looked really, really good. So, I do have Jackson State at number three. All right, at number two, I have Alabama State. (sighs) Now, I was trying to figure out how the hell did they get both Andrew Body and Rico Dozier in the same year. I think that's absolutely insane. And I don't know what A.D. Robinson did or what they told him, but boy, he he got some game because I think those two are an absolute dangerous pair, even though they do play on opposite sides of the ball. I think Rico Dozier is the front runner for the SWAC defensive player of the year. And I think Andrew Body is the front runner for Offensive Player of the Year, even though he didn't play last year. Even though he was hurt, we like we we all know what Andrew Body can do with a full season. We like we seen him do it. Like we we know who he is. Um, even though they lost Bubba Adams, Rico is not a drop off, not even at the slightest. Not even at the slightest. That that is a big, huge boost for what they lost. Um, now, I think defensively as a whole, I think this might be the the best front seven in the SWAC. Starting with starting with Rico, then they still have Demarcus Cunningham. They still have uh, Taquan Thomas. Like they just have a bunch of guys on that front seven that are going to be amazing. Now. Defensively, though, or in the secondary, they do lose Mikey Victor. They still, I don't think Adrian Maddox is there. I don't think Kelly Jackson is there. But they still have some quality guys in the secondary that I do believe will make up for what they lost. So, defensively, I, they can be top two or three. But in the front seven, I think they're number one front seven. I think their front seven is going to be absolutely crazy. And offensively though i'm like i'm thinking dad i'm i can only imagine how this offense would have looked if they still would have had Keyshawn johnson mind you if Keyshawn johnson would have stayed at alabama state i would have had this team at number one i would have him at number one hands down i think that connection with them with andrew body and johnson would have been absolutely dangerous but they still have some quality guys on offense let me see uh tyree yeah, Tyree Sanders and Isaiah Scott, those two receivers, I think they're going to be real good for Alabama State with with those two and Andrew Body. I am interested to see what other receivers are in the rotation for that offense, but I think this team is going to be absolutely dangerous this year. I think Andrew Body is going to have a better year than what he had in his first two seasons at, at Texas Southern. I think this team is going to be absolutely dangerous. Their season starts off with with uh, North Carolina Central, so I think that 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 game is going to tell me what this team could look like heading into 2024. But yeah, I have Alabama State at number two. All right. At number one, I have Florida A and M. Uh, now I'm not as confident. As putting him in number one like I was last year. But I'll say this. I think they have the best offensive line, starting with Jalen Gross and uh Ashton Gamble. 
I do believe they have the best secondary, starting with uh, Kendall Bowler and uh, Deco Wilson. I believe they just have the best collection of talent. Period. I think they had the best recruiting class. I think they were top. I think they were top two or top three in recruiting in the whole FCS. New starting quarterback. Let me see what his name was. Daniel Richardson. New quarterback uh, starter. Uh, I think that they probably have some of the fastest receivers in the SWAC, starting with Jalen Ward and uh, and Jeremiah Gassett. I think I, I, I think that in with James Cozy, the new head coach, I'm interested to see how this team is put together. Like, like they have, mind you, they have a lot of, a lot of talent on this team, just all across the board. I think they have the best collection of receivers. Period. Um, that front seven on defense is gonna look completely different. I'm, I'm, I'm just interested to see what that defense looked like. Period. Cause that whole, I was, cause I'm not gonna lie, even though they was having. A good recruiting class I was worried about the guys that they were losing and for a while I was worried about them but then they started making you know some more progress in, in recruiting I'm like oh, okay all right so it, it looks good so while I do have them at number one I'm not I'm not as confident like I was because they do have a tough schedule ahead of them too uh, let me just see let me see, let me see, let me see. Whew. Damn, they play University of Miami this year. Whew. They got to go. They got to go to Alabama State. They got to go to Jackson State. They got to go to Pairview A&M. And then they have the Florida Classic. They have the Florida Classic. FAMU, I don't think FAMU is going to have the same season like they did last year. But I do believe they have the best collection of talent. I do believe, in my eyes, as of right now, they have the best team. And we're going to see what happens, man. But I do have them at number one. But I am reserved. I do have the right to change my mind if I, depending on, on how this season goes. Now, they have Alabama State and Jackson State back to back. Now, depending on how those two games go is how I believe the rest of the year is going to go, even though it's half, halfway through the year. But I do have FAMU at number one. But I do have the right to change my mind throughout the duration of the year. <laughs> but we'll see about that. But yeah, man, that's my that's my top 10 list, man. Uh, so hopefully y'all enjoy that. Um, I'm about to go ahead to the food truck festival because your boy hungry man so listen i do have some videos dropping this week some on just some on some random videos not even have anything to do with recruiting at all but just random videos that i'm ready to drop soon man so shout out to y'all hopefully y'all enjoy the list let me know what y'all top 10 list is let me know if i missed anybody that y'all wanted to be on the list and we got college football next month can't wait man holla y'all